This is calibration of a TE-1000 puff air sampler. You start with the module, which is a TE-1002, and you want to make sure you have an empty piece of glass in there. No foam, no XAD, just an empty piece of glass. You make sure the gaskets are in there and you screw it back together. There is a rubber stopper that needs to be removed. And then you place the module on the quick disconnect by using the two quick disconnect tabs and making sure it's tight and sealed properly. You will need to remove the delta cover by loosening up the three plastic nuts and the hold down frame. The next step is to install the TE5040 calibration device. This is done by reverse order how you took off the hold down frame, making sure that the three washers are on top. The next step is to install the three foot piece of tubing. Next, you will need to install the TE5030 30 inch water manometer. The first step is to remove the valves on the top and make sure they are fully open. It is recommended to remove the valve and screw back on with one thread on. The black tubing is then installed on either side of the valve. One valve is open to the atmosphere and the other has the black tubing on it. Next you will need to turn on the air sampler. Open the door of the TE507 timer and flip the switch to the right turning it on. You will need to loosen the shaft lock on the TE5010 voltage variator and using a screwdriver to set the magnahelic gauge on 70. After obtaining 70 on the magnahelic gauge, it is always a good idea to tighten the shaft lock back up so it does not move. With the magnahelic set at 70 inches, you will now need to read the manometer. One side will go up and one side goes down. You need to add those together. The first reading that went up was 4.1. The second reading that went down was 4.0, which gives us a total of 8.1 inches of water. Now we're gonna move the ball valve away from us to obtain the reading of 60 on the magnahelic gauge reading. Then you will need to read the manometer again. In this case, it was up 3.5, and then it went down 3.5 inches for a total of 7.0 inches. Then you will need to move the ball valve away from you again and obtain a reading of 50 inches on the magnahelic gauge. Then like we did before, you will need to read the manometer. It went up 3.0 and it went down 2.9 inches for a total of 5.9 inches. Again, move the ball valve away from you to obtain a reading of 40 on the magnahelic gauge. This time, the manometer went up 2.6 and it went down 2.5 inches for a total of 5.1 inches. Again, move the ball valve away from you and get the fifth and final point, which is 30 on the magnahelic gauge. In our example, the first leg went up 2.2 inches and down 2.0 inches for a total of 4.2 inches. Now that the calibration is complete, please pull the ball valve towards you and open it back up. Close the door on the TE5007 timer. Next, remove the TE5040 calibration device and the black piece of tubing. You will also 
need to roll up the slack tube manometer. Before doing this, you will need to close both valves on the top by screwing them clockwise, completely sealed, so no water escapes. You will need to go to tish-env.com to find the calibration worksheet for the TE-1000. Go over to calibration and then go down to calibration worksheets and the TE-1000 PUF worksheet will be the first one under calibration worksheets. Click on that link to download the Excel spreadsheet. As you can see, you can put your location in, the site ID and serial number, and the date and the technician. Next is the site conditions. In our example, the barometric pressure was 29.96 inches of mercury and the temperature was 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Next is the calibration orifice. You will need to put the serial number in and you will also need to put the Q standard slope and the Q standard intercept. The slope in our example is 9.89525 and the intercept was negative 0.04826. The calibration due date is one year from the first calibration of the orifice. Next is the calibration information. In our example, the first point at 70 was 8.1 inches. The second point was 7.0 inches at 60 and 5.9 inches at 50. 5.1 at 40 and 4.2 inches at 30. Looking at our linear regression, the slope of our TE-1000 sampler is 35.9078 and the intercept is negative 2.0661. The correlation coefficient is 0.9969. For this to be a valid calibration, the correlation coefficient has to be greater than 0.990. In our example, it is, so this is a valid calibration and we are now done with the calibration process for a TE-1000 pump air sampler.